Hello everyone, Sean Benzine here, and today I'm showing you how to make some firewall rules um, on your Sophos UTM9. Um, I'm continuing this. Uh, I'm continuing this off of my last two videos on uh, my U U Sophos UTM9 review and the installation. So this is some um, some settings that uh, you might want to go through. Um, uh, after setting up your UTM for the first time um, so uh, right now <clears throat> we're going to make some changes to the firewall so you'll go over to network protection and then firewall and now uh, if you saw my last video we only enabled web surfing which is HTTP HTTPS and file transfers so FTP and TFTP okay well, how about if you had some other services that you want to add, such as HTTP, or sorry, uh, sorry, uh, SSH. Um, and, you know, you want to allow SSH through your firewall. Uh, well, what you'll do is click New Rule. And um, you can just leave this as No Group, or um, in a later video, we'll show, I'll show you about groups. Okay, the position. Now... For this type of uh, service or this type of rule, it won't really matter. Um, the only time it matters, uh, if you go back to how these rules work, rules will work from the top down. Okay, so um, if you have, let's say, uh, a rule uh, in position one that says allow SSH and then a rule two that says disable SSH. Uh, or do not allow SSH um, well you would understand that the first one number one would um, would allow SSH even though two says to block it because the firewall uh, sees that the first rule in the path says okay it's fine but since we're only allowing and nothing else in our rules um, denies it then um, we can uh, we can be sure that this will be fine. Okay, so uh, for sources, okay, you can hit you hit the little uh, browse icon. So say, uh, for example, any source, and then hit the browse again. We want. SSH and then destination okay so the destination would obviously be um, whatever host you want um, you know whatever host you want uh, SSH to be able to go to so say server 1 the IP address 192.168.1 dot 55 for example and then hit save okay so that means that um, any source that comes in that's SSH goes to server 1 allow and hit save okay and then be sure to turn on the rule okay if you if uh, it remains like this uh, your traffic will not work so go like that and that's how you make um, that's how you make a firewall rule to allow a certain port through the firewall. It's it's very simple. Uh, actually, I like how they outline their um, their firewall rules. And so after you allow the rule, if for some reason the traffic, you know, you use like ping.eu or network tools or something to figure out if port 22 is open, it's not. You can click open live log. and you'll see what traffic is dropped and allowed so um, that will help you when uh, troubleshooting okay you also have um, you also have other options in the fire uh, for creating firewall rules okay um, there's the country blocking 
So if you want to block certain um, certain countries, you can. So just uh, enable this and select from which country. Now, um, geo it's called geofencing, and uh, it is not a hundred percent accurate because um, it's very simple to spoof your IP address to become uh, to be from a different uh, country. Um, and also, I mean, uh, there's proxies and things all over the place. If someone really wants to try to, you know, uh, attack you from a different country or something like that, it's, it's very, it's very easy. And so, but it is, it is a layer of security. So for instance, if you know that, you know, you only do you only expect Canadian traffic on your network, right? You can um, block everything but Canada, um, and so you can you can do a rule like that. Or if you want, and you know you notice in your firewall rules, uh, sorry, firewall logs that you get it scanned a lot from China and Korea in those places, then um, you can choose to block China and Korea. Um, if, and, um, that would be, that would be okay. Uh, and it would work. Okay. So I'll just turn this off for now. And one more thing about that is that it just adds more to the CPU. Um, more, there's more stuff to do for the CPU. So you might want to take that into account. Okay. So there's the, uh, exceptions. Okay, so you can create um, exceptions like a, a country. Okay, you have the option for traffic coming and traffic going to uh, that specific country. Over to ICMP. Now, this is uh, kind of important and uh, it actually uh, got me uh, it took me it took me a little bit to figure out what was stopping but um, there is some um, there are rules by default that prevent trace routes um, from leaving the network so when you do a trace route it will die um, at the firewall and it you're trying to figure out why uh, so you'll have to allow trace routes uh, forwarded through uh, gateway forwards trace routes on your firewall um, to allow the trace route traffic to leave your network and stuff like that. And if you want your gateway to show up um, in a trace route, you'll have to select this option as well. Okay, and that's um, and uh, that's the same for ping. Okay, you'll want to ping uh, from the gateway and uh, gateway forwards pings. So after you make all the if after you make uh, changes to a specific setting, so for instance trace route settings, we click these, hit apply in the trace route field. Okay, and likewise for ping, apply. Now in the advanced tab, there is some uh, there are some other settings. For instance, TCP window scaling. Okay, and uh, TCP window scaling helps um, with the TCP window size uh, and stuff like that. Okay, and then there's logging options, uh, you know, logging FTP data connections, uh, unique DNS requests, dropped broadcasts, and invalid packets. Okay, so that's the firewall and. Uh, um, uh, pretty in-depth overview of the firewall module of this UTM. If you have any questions or comments about any one of my videos, please leave them in the comment section below. And you can also visit my website, shamancini.com. Thank you, everyone.